Welcome to the Odyssey Podcasts. This is Jean Cavellos, Director of the Odyssey Writing Workshop's Charitable Trust. The Odyssey Writing Workshop is an intensive six-week program for writers of fantasy, science fiction, and horror whose work is approaching publication quality, and for published writers who want to improve their work. Odyssey is held each summer on the campus of St. Anselm College in Manchester, New Hampshire. Adult writers from all over the world apply. Only 15 are admitted. Top authors, editors, and agents serve as guest lecturers. For more information, visit www.odysseyworkshop.org. Podcast 66 is an excerpt from Jack Ketchum's lecture at Odyssey 2013 on writing from the wound. The text of this recording is copyright 2013 by Dallas Mayer. The sound recording is copyright 2013 by Odyssey Writing Workshop's Charitable Trust. What I want you to imagine is that it's uh, all 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, we're sitting around a campfire. So I'm telling you a ghost story. Welcome, campers. It's dark out there, isn't it? Better keep that fire going. Toss another log in. Keep the beasts at bay. But darker still might be the heart of the guy sitting next to you. The one with the big goofy smile. Or your own heart, for that matter. I really don't know you, do I? And maybe the real question is, do you know yourself? what you're capable of, or at least capable of imagining. Can we start with a premise? It should never be easy or simple to take or even threaten a life, any life. Yet there are so many, many ways to do so. Some violent, some more subtle, but still wildly hurtful. Our job as writers who tend to progress from the dark side is to explore and chronicle, and as best we can through fiction, speak the truth. Let me tell you a little story. Back in 1995, Jeff Gelb took some time off from his Hot Blood series with Marty Greenberg to edit a book with a brand new notion called Fear Itself. Contributors included John Shirley, Rex Miller, Gary Brandner, Graham Masterton, Nancy Collins, and Joyce Carol Oates among them, and myself. Jeff's idea was so simple, so obvious, so out there, it was amazing nobody had thought of it before. Get a bunch of horror writers together and ask them to write about what they are really, truly, honestly afraid of. Not what they thought might scare the shit out of their public, but what makes them want to shit themselves. As Jeff put it, I asked writers to do something quite different, quite brave, to admit their greatest fears to their greatest fans. I urge you to read this book if you can get your hands on a copy. Not just because it's a hell of a tight, well-orchestrated anthology, but because of what it reveals about the writers themselves. Did you know that Gary Brandner has a phobia about tickets? When Jeff put out the call for contributors, I sort of instantly raised my hand, so to speak, and I asked, is anybody doing snakes? <laughs> snakes and I, we go back a long way. When I was a kid, we had garter snakes in our backyard, no problem. We'd play with them, wrap them around our fingers. But then, on my first trip to Florida, at some alligator farm or other, I drifted off from the tour group a bit, fascinated by a swarm of baby gators crawling all over each other and wondering how come they weren't all biting one another because maybe they all sprung from one mama so I had a question for the tour guide and like any good little eight or nine year old I approached the group and this time quite literally raised my hand the guide had just asked his own question who wants to put this snake around his neck <laughs> here's how I wrote the scene in my story snakes in which the lead character is a woman. And Anne, with her hand in the air and thinking hard about the peaceful drows of baby alligators, found herself draped by and staring into the face of a five-pound boa constrictor named Marvin. Everyone's smiling at her, until her father said, I think we better take it off her. I don't know, she looks kind of pale to me. <laughs> and she fainted dead away. In real life, I didn't faint dead away, but close. For years thereafter, snakes haunted me. Snakes and dinosaurs, they sort of spelled one another, chasing me through my dreamscape. At the time I wrote the story, I was in love with a woman who'd recently moved to Sarasota. She had to. 
She'd been ruined financially by the stockbroker Scofflaw dad of her eight-year-old boy. The man had simply disappeared. The IRS gobbled up her home for the taxes he owed, to which forms he yearly forged her name, and she needed to go back to work big time and needed her mother and her father, who'd retired there, to help her out with her son. One day, she was driving home through the kind of blinding torrents that Floridians know so well, only this one didn't stop. This one went on forever. By the time she reached her turn off the main street, the water was over her tires and simply roiling in front of her home. Roiling with, guess what? Snakes. Climbing all over one another. Slithering for high ground in the deluge. She drove around them very carefully. <laughs> and when the rain finally stopped, let her sweet golden retriever Katie out with an eye to do her business. Glanced out through the glass door of the lanai and saw Katie pointing, and a huge banded water snake, maybe seven feet long, pointing right back, striking, darting at her. For the rest of this, you'll have to read the story. You can find it in my collection, Peaceable Kingdom. But from what I've told you, I think you can see why I wanted to write it. Fear of snakes, but fear of something else, too. Another kind of dangerous encounter altogether. That scofflaw husband, the father of her by now very troubled, abandoned son, who still loved his dad, whose heart was maybe broken. As far as I'm concerned, his dad was a monster too. A casual, everyday monster, but a monster nevertheless. Who anybody could happen to marry, who could be anybody's father, life-threatening, causing God knows what kind of damage. I nailed his sorry ass in the story too. <laughs> and in my novel Offspring, I nailed it yet a second time, wherein I asked, who's worse, this guy or a bunch of cannibals? I chose the cannibals. Writing fiction is, among other things, a very nice vehicle for revenge. The point of using snakes here as a kind of template is twofold. First, there are all kinds of monsters, all kinds of people and things to fear, all kinds of grief and pain. Second, I was writing from my own internal experience of these events, and I'm not just talking about the snake around my neck, either. Let's break this first point down a bit. Look at how many things and what kinds of things my heroine has to fear. Snakes in high water. Obviously a bad moment for anybody, especially for someone who's scared of snakes. The banded water snake, who, by the way, pursues her relentlessly from the moment he makes his nasty appearance. She's afraid for her well-loved dog. And at the beginning of the story, she's on the phone with her lawyer, who's urging her to sell what little she's got left, do whatever it takes to get hold of the money to go after the husband. She doesn't know if she can do that, if she can make it financially. And she's scared that she simply can't. She's also afraid of what this lonely abandonment is doing to her son. That's a lot of fear in the course of a single day. To merely get through the day, she's got to confront all these things. And every one of these confrontations creates tension, suspense, the everyday and the extraordinary. The tension derives from what she's going through, one woman, one day. To make you fear for her safety and sanity on that day, I'd better know her, and know her well, so that you, the reader, can know her. Which brings me to my second point. Exactly how the hell do you do that? Well, you experience her. You dig deep. Deep into yourself. You find her inside you. You empathize. It was easy for me to empathize with this particular woman. Hell, I was in love with her real-life counterpart. But I think it's impossible to really know another person fully, no matter how close you are. There's always places in the heart and mind you're never going to reach. But what you can reach, and must reach, is into yourself, where that character you're creating exists somewhere. And that's what empathy's all about. If you can't empathize, if you can't or aren't willing to put yourself in someone else's place with all the compassion and insight you can muster, to find their character through your own character, you have no business calling yourself a fiction writer. One trick to this, if you can call it a trick, is to do a bit of method acting. You have a situation where your hero's in a panic because he thinks he's lost his wallet. Remember that time you lost your house keys? Remember how it felt then? What a goddamn asshole I am? Write that feeling. Remember how devastated you were when Julie broke up with you last year? You've got a character in your story, a guy, who's breaking up with somebody named Laura now. Write your devastation over Julie as Laura's devastation. The same feeling. Male or female, 
the essence of devastation is the same. If you've read me, you know that most of my monsters are not snakes or vampires or werewolves. They're people. The guy at the campfire next to you with the goofy grin. They're us, but not us. They're other. The bad guys. Aliens. Snakes in the broadest sense of the word. But you've got to reach the bad guys in you, too, and get them down in the story. Dig into the dark, mean night of the soul. Your soul. Remember Peter Straub's line in Ghost Story? What's the worst thing you've ever done? First line, by the way, which is a hell of a first line. Well, what is it? What are you ashamed of? What godful thing have you fantasized doing but would never do? What's the worst thing you can imagine actually happening to you? To your loved ones? What breaks your heart? That last one's especially important, but I'll save it for later discussion. In his book on the writerly life, To Each Their Darkness, Gary A. Braunbeck says something to the effect that if you like this kind of stuff, especially if you like it enough to want to write it yourself, you're probably in some way damaged goods in the first place. <laughs> well, Gary, I mean, who isn't? But I think he's got an excellent point here. We are damaged. So what? For a fiction writer, that's good. Use the damage. Write from the wound. Go as deep as you dare. Stare into your own black abyss and report back. No need to reveal everything. Children have to learn how to lie a little, or else they grow up without protection. And so do we writer types. But you need to embrace the damage as a co-conspirator, as uniquely you, as something you can use. Throw it out there into the light, to a place where it can do some good for others, and maybe even for yourself. You need to be honest. Really good fiction is always an attempt at total honesty. Be true to both the good and the downright dangerous inside. See them as clearly as you can. Use your empathy. Search out your characters in your own heart and write them as though they were you. They are, you know. Every last one of them, if you do it right. Just keep the damn fire burning, okay? Toss out another log. We need to get through the night. I'm going to give you... <laughs> Thanks. I'm going to give you a little assignment. Now, I'd like you to address these questions that I just um, asked you. Any one of them. You don't have to do all of them. You don't have to, you have to do one. Here's the, the, the options. What's the worst thing you've ever done? What are you ashamed of? Write that if you want. What godable thing have you fantasized doing but would never do? What's the worst thing you can actually imagine happening to you, to your loved ones? What breaks your heart? By the way, I hope... When I ask you to write this stuff down, I hope, possibly, you might wind up getting a story out of what you just did. Uh, that's, well, that's why we're here, actually. The text of this recording is copyright 2013 by Dallas Mayer. The sound recording is copyright 2013 by Odyssey Writing Workshops Charitable Trust.